It takes uh, the assault weapons uh, ban to make sure uh, the guns aren't on the streets. These are the weapons that criminals prefer to use. These weapons were designed to kill a lot of people. This is simply Russian roulette. Sound familiar? That Opponents of your firearm true. freedom. We're back. Repeating the same old tired lies they used back in 1994. Make no mistake about it. This is not a gun designed for hunting. This is not a gun made for sport. This is a killing machine. A gun ban based on deception and distortion, all to demonize an entire class of firearms and the law-abiding people who own them. This bill is about the production of a deadly class of guns called semi-automatic assault weapons. Assault weapons, a bogus definition invented to scare the American public. Rapid fire, powerful military style assault weapons. They spray shoot. The issue of assault weapons is a phony. It's purely emotional and designed to do nothing but frighten the American people. But the so-called assault weapons ban became the centerpiece of what the Clinton administration cleverly packaged as a massive crime bill. So the NRA took the fight straight to Capitol Hill. This thing is a cosmetic fraud on the American public. Cosmetic that's, that's nonsense, because as Wayne LaPierre in Charlton Heston told reporters, it's only about how these guns look, not how they shoot. Like any conventional firearm, each time the trigger is pulled, only one shot is fired. They're trying to say these guns are different. We all know they're not different. They shoot and function exactly the same. They don't have any facts to back up their words like rapid fire, battlefield weapons, weapons of war, bigger holes, more dangerous. Those are all words, and that's why they won't go to the range. A challenge the NRA made to President Clinton, the Attorney General, and members of Congress to settle this debate once and for all. If President Clinton wanted to pass this bill, they could have come to the range today with their experts and called our bluff. As you can imagine, no one from the Clinton White House showed up, but plenty from the media did. And they saw for themselves the facts behind the fraud they had been reporting. It's pretend crime control on the American public. Any criminal with a gun is a problem, and we need to focus on taking them off the streets. The truth behind all the charades. But the media still insisted on showing Hollywood images of Rambo-style rifles to keep the public confused. 48 hours, armed and deadly. Propaganda at its best. But the NRA kept firing back, running TV ads like this one, warning Americans that one more gun ban wasn't going to make their neighborhoods any safer. Don't tell me what'll work. Tell me what'll sell. How about another gun control law? So my gun control plan to ban these guns will break the back of violent crime and rid our streets of violent criminals. Do you have any questions? Then there was this full page ad. An angry Charles Schumer, more than happy to take away your Second Amendment rights, was less than pleased when held accountable for his actions. The NRA wants to frighten the American people with the lies in this ad. The NRA wants to bully you the, member of con the members of Congress with lies. No doubt the truth hurt because the NRA and its supporters were exposing the real agenda of the anti-gun forces. What we're talking about is not just 19 different kinds of guns. This is the first step of removing guns from freedom-loving individuals in this country. In fact, Senator Dianne Feinstein admitted that in an interview with 60 Minutes. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them. M Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. I would have done it. This isn't about criminals. It isn't even about cops. This is a blatant effort to take away citizens' rights to own a particular type of gun. And if the gun haters in Congress had their way, they would like to outlaw all guns. It was a fight that went right down to the wire. The time has come for those of you to say that the only way for Congress to make their seats safe is to make the rest of America safer. Even police opposed to the Clinton gun ban were forced to show up for White House photo ops. Rank and file officers were pulled off street duty at taxpayers' expense 
and often against their will and under threat of disciplinary action if they refused to participate. In the final hours, President Clinton found himself wheeling and dealing in exchange for votes. In the end, he managed to eke out a victory. We'll mark this date down. We'll come back in a couple of years and we'll see what happened to the crime rate. And we'll see what happened to all these, quote, prevention programs. And the American people are going to be focused. They're going to be focused in about two months on this bill. It was a White House victory that would be short-lived. The template for a systematic gun-by-gun-by-gun by gun by gun destruction of the Second Amendment backfired. Wayne LaPierre's battle plan would create costly consequences. Longtime supporters of your firearm freedom, who were fooled into voting against the NRA by the White House, to vote against you, gun owners, for the first time in their careers. In all, 20 members of Congress were voted out of office by you, the NRA. It's really brought my awareness up to a level where I recognize that I need personally to do something about it or I, I run the risk of losing a very, very important, you know, fundamental right. Americans who felt betrayed by some members of Congress who decided protecting your Second Amendment rights wasn't their job. It was a wake-up call. Gun owners committed to turn grassroots power into voting power at the polls. Watch out, we're back. We're going to be back this fall at the polls all across America, and a lot of these politicians are not going to come back. And soon, the Clinton White House Kick a little ass up here. and the media were eating their words. Is the NRA back with a vengeance, and maybe reports of its death were, were exaggerated as well. <laughs> they were premature, Katie, as a matter of fact. Now they are back, and they are demonstrating rank, sheer power. Power in numbers, and a warning to politicians of what was to come. Sorry, Tom. Washington voters are saying the speaker has stopped listening. A message that was heard across America's heartland and rallied the troops. They didn't believe us. They found out on November 8, 1994, we led the revolution.